one of the things I have to do is run the wire from the gate operator over to the receive head of the photo eye, which is going to be mounted right here. And there's a conduit that has been pre-installed underneath the driveway. And it's coming out right there. But as you can see, they didn't tape off the uh, tape on the back. Looks like they attempted to tape off the the uh, conduit at the end so no dirt would get in it. So as a precaution, what we're going to do is we're going to blow out one of them. That's going to be a really tough pull. We may have to actually uh, back off the fitting up here because you see you've got a 90 and then going into another 90 right off the bat and that's going to be really tough to pull through the good news is it's three quarter inch bad news is it's three quarter inch metallic so uh that uh doesn't make for a very easy pull so we'll blow these out and uh, that'll get some of the dirt out and then we'll put a fitting uh, well, we won't put any fitting first. We'll pull the wire first and then we'll worry about our fittings and the conduit down there. Now, uh, a tip for doing conduit this seal tight in cold weather, get your conduit out and get it straightened out. All right, I've just got it, I've just got it rigged up like this in the truck and then I've got it set, setting in the sun. What that'll do is make this conduit more malleable and you can bend it the way that you need to as opposed to uh, just pulling it right out of the factory plastic wrap like this. Um, it's kind of hard to uh, get it straight when it's like that, but setting it in the sun and then straightening it out will help. So we'll blow this out right now and let's see what it looks like on the other side. So we can see that we went from dirt in the conduit to no dirt. We're gonna have to uh, go from three quarter inch down to half inch and then we'll have to make these bends, which is why we wanna pull the wire first. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the fish tape through this side over here. I think it's gonna be the easiest for me to start on this side. Now, I would typically use a metal fish tape, but I only have a fiberglass. We've broken two metal fish tapes in just as many months. So um, it, uh, it uh, should do the trick, and I'll, I'll give you a couple tips on doing it with this where you don't have anything on the other end. I was able to get the fish tape through pretty smoothly. See, it's coming out of that conduit right there, and then I've got it over to here. Uh, I'll have to clean out around that conduit and get that tape off there and uh, to be able to put my glue and my fitting on there. Worry about that here in a second. So I've got the wire in, on the spool set up. One of the trick with these, you don't want the wire, um, same thing with the uh, uh, seal tight that I uh, showed you earlier. You don't want it uh, to where it has uh, bends in it and one way to make sure that it rolls out straight is to put it on the ground like this and either pull it out and pull it off the spool or if you don't have it set up to where you can easily do that which i don't this is only a 30 foot pull so i'm not going to set it up on a rack to where i can easily pull it off uh so what are the uh one of the things you don't want to do is you don't want to pull it off like this because when you do that, it's going to be just like that. It's going to have those kinks in there. We want it as straight as possible. The easy way for you to do it when you're only doing these short runs or if you don't have a rack to set up is just push it off like this. Now, this is direct burial wire, so the exterior jacket is pretty durable. That's why I'm not hesitating to actually use my boot to push it off like that. It's not damaging the wire. Uh, because it's not piercing the jacket on the outside of the cable. We'll do one more little spool like that. You see how it's wrinkling up like that? That's what we don't want. So we can straighten that out here in a minute. We'll go ahead and do more than what we need so when we get to pulling the wire, we don't have to go through this again. All right, now we'll just take this spool and bend with our knees put it down here on the ground and we'll pull it out and then 
we'll just uh, whip it around a little bit to try to get all those loops out of it. We're twisting it and putting tension on it at the same time. So that's probably a lot more than what we need. That's okay. We've got to be able to make splices and so on. So now I'll just walk it back. And set it down right next to the uh, fish tape. So now I can prep it and I'll show you how to do that here in a second. But uh, this is the way to do it when you're by yourself is to pull that wire out. And if you're pulling a long run, maybe over 50 feet, you can take the middle of the wire, grab it right there, and then pull it down to right here. And the benefit of that is, is you're only pulling, in this case, 25, 30 feet at a time. You're not pulling the whole wire with all of that weight on there if you were to pull this down to the middle. So I've got it broke halfway, so when I'm pulling it, I'm not pulling this part of the wire as well too. I'm only pulling just a little bit and this full length of it. So it's not as much weight on the, uh, on the joint right here that I'm about to make. Here's the stages of the cable prep that I went through to uh, get it ready to pull off of this fish tape. So I took the jacket. First thing I did was cut anything that had a crazy bend on it like this. At the end of the cable, I cut that off and that left me with the straight cable. Then I took it and I scored it. Scored it. And then I, and then I pulled that jacket off. And then I took the, pull, the rip cord and rip the insulation all the way down to there. And then that left me with uh, the inner wires with their different colored insulation, the shield, uh, and uh, what's left over with the, uh, the uh, uh, cable jacket. Now we're left with this right here. And I've got one wire. I cut three of the wires off. I cut the jacket off. I cut the uh, shield off and the, the shield wire, cut those all off, and then uh, I'm in the process of making this clean so it'll be easy pull. And then now we're gonna prep it to go onto the fish tape and pull it through. And here's the end result. What I did is I took that orange cable, the orange wire that was out of the cable, and I taped the very end first. I just taped this, and then I took the cable and spun it around the fish tape like this, and then taped the very end down here. And then I came back down here and then ran tape, electrical tape, just standard electrical tape, all the way up. Now normally this orange part wouldn't be exposed here and there, but I just wanted to show it to you so you could see the idea behind this. And then now when I'm pulling on it, that tension uh, around the twist is what's gonna keep this thing from slipping off. And that's the goal of us doing this. We don't want it to slip off halfway through. And then we gotta pull the wire back out and then pull the fish tape and push it back down through. So uh, I'll finish taping this up right there, but hopefully you got the concept of what you need to do. You need to make sure that you don't nick any of those cables any of the wires inside the cable so you have a good strong wire to pull from you pull it you're going to pull an extra five or six feet out of it and then cut it off and then that way you know that there's not a a, a wire that's in there that has been pulled with too much tension on it possibly damaging the actual wire itself but um we'll get to that stage here in a second i'll finish taping this up and then i'll pull it through i finished taping it now i'm going to go over here to the other side and pull it now it might get caught on that first part when it's uh is taped up but i think we got a good angle on it to where we can get past it i'm wrong uh, see we're pulling dirt in there too so that's uh gonna be causing a little bit of an issue i'll blow it out one more time so we don't pull, oh no, it's actually getting caught there on it. So now, as you can see, I'm pulling it straight. I'm not pulling it at any angle. I'm pulling it straight right along with how I'm pulling it. If I were to have the wire out here, it would have to make that bend and then come in there. That's not what I want. 
so I'm gonna blow this out one more time. See if we can get any of the air. It's gonna be hard to see. All right, it did blow some of it out. So now that we're past that one little hump, let's see how it pulls. Looks like it's pulling pretty good. That's probably pulling dirt in there. All right, now here's the tricky part. I'm gonna take it nice and slow. There we go. All right, no water in there. That's a good thing. Well, it's a good thing in one aspect and it's a bad thing in another. Uh, for this particular wire, because it's a direct burial wire, it's made to be without conduit inside the dirt and it has a, a rating specifically for that. And most of these direct burial cables will have a UV rating too, so they can actually be sitting on top of roof and UVs won't damage the jacket, therefore damaging the wire, uh, causing you problems with your connection. Uh, the water in there actually can be a good lubricant, but it can also make it harder to pull because you're trying to grab onto something as you're pulling. It looks like we're through there, so I'm gonna pull way more than we need. I'm gonna pull about 15 feet more than we need. There's a reason for that. So we have all that excess. I'm gonna pull just another couple feet, just for the fun of it. Now I'm gonna blow the conduit out one more time. All right. Now we'll cut the uh, cable off of the fish tape, take all this tape off um, up to a certain point, up to about here, and then we'll spool this back up. That should be the only wire pull that we have for the day. And the reason why I'm leaving a little bit of this actually on there is because these older fish tapes, the head breaks off, and when you go to retract it, you can actually pull the fish tape back in there, and then it's pretty much done for. It's a pain in the butt to open these and try to, to re-spool them. I've never seen it done successfully. So if you leave a little bit on the fish tape, you'll prevent it from uh, sucking back in there. Getting the cable prepped over here on the uh, gate operator side of the drive and show you what I got. I've got half inch conduit with a 90 degree fitting on it going underneath the track into the gate operator. That's this right here. So it's a three foot wire run from this box over to the gate operator. I drilled a half inch approximately half inch hole there. I fed the wire through the nut for the 90 degree fitting. Um, I'll mount those in a second and um, uh, I'll uh, have the wire that comes out here. But what I'm gonna do before I make that connection is actually feed the wire through here first as opposed to um, putting the uh, fitting on the back of the wire uh, uh, or on the back of the connector and then feeding the wire through there. If I do it like this, where I feed the cable through this hole on this side and then feed it into here, I've got a little bit more flexibility because I can move the fitting around if I need it and if I need to bang it on something to help feed the wire, I can. And then if I need to just back this connector connector off altogether and then just feed it through the connector first and then through, feed it through the conduit, I will. Um, now on this side, it wouldn't be uncommon for you to just leave it bare like that, which is how I'm going to have to do it. The other thing is, is if you by chance have a knockout to where you can put that in there, you could put another connector on there. But what we'll do is we'll feed it up underneath the gate operator and then possibly feed it through that wire right or through that hole right there, or just zip tie it to uh, possibly the uh, the foot pedal and um, and let the wire just go up through here and then into the box through here to make our connections there um, the uh, the other thing is too is in this scenario we're gonna have to uh, run power to the photo wise separately so the device that we're connecting we probably wouldn't be able to make a junction in the box or a, or, or, a, or a connection on the box because we still need to run that wire down here to power um, if it had more than one hole in it, you could possibly just run the cable up to here and then the wiring back down to the, 
to the uh, power supply and I keep pointing over here is because the power supply is going to be connected to that outlet right there so um, that'll also possibly help you uh, understand why I'm running more cable in this than just up to here plus a little bit to strip it back and the reason is is yeah I have that much extra but then I need to take you know another two feet and run it back down to the uh, power outlet that joint right there is completed uh, you can see I didn't leave much service which I'm not concerned about it's an easy wire pull um, and uh, I I just don't uh, need uh, you know six inches of service when I can leave all the service over here now before I mentioned that this one was gonna actually have to come up to the control box and mount that's not true I, I, I forgot I, mean, I just got ahead of myself this one is just going to power so as long as we have it powered, we're good. It doesn't need to actually send signal either. So this one, and this is the reason why I cut the uh, conduit off another six inches. This one is just gonna go back over here and we'll just zip tie it over there so it's uh, nice and secure. We'll strip it back uh, a good, uh, uh, you know, six to eight inches and uh, just pull two wires and then connect it to the, to the uh, transformer that we're gonna plug in over here. So we'll uh, we'll do that later. Um, just a, a, a quick mention on getting those lock nuts, getting the uh, uh, nuts for the fittings on there. Um, I used the, this tool to, to get it done. This is, uh, I think, a Greenlee nut tightener. And uh, it's very uncommon that I have to use this. Most of the stuff you can just knock out with a screwdriver and, uh, and a hammer. Uh, to get it tightened on there, but this is a perfect scenario for it because as you can see it's kind of behind everything and hard to get to so it made it pretty easy for me to just put it on there and uh, and tighten it down. And now we'll go to the other side. So here's the fitting that we're going to use to take this three quarter inch down to half inch. So it's a three quarter inch female to female coupling and then it's a half inch female to threaded coupling and then we'll take this half inch uh, 90 and we'll put it on the end of here and we probably should do that first we'll feed the wire through it and then uh, we'll we'll put this on there that'll allow us to just glue it on there right there without having to twist this on afterwards and then you can see I got a screwdriver down there for spacing for when I go to put it on I'll use that for spacing so I can get the fitting on and I've cleaned out underneath the conduit and uh, blown it out a couple times just to make sure that there's no dirt in there that uh, could or rocks that could cause issues in the future if they have to re-pull it so it's a little bit overkill but uh, just better be safe than sorry so we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, do the fitting now that's what it looks like glue put glue in uh, let's see if you get better in. put glue in back here and uh, glue this was already glued together and then this i just twisted on because it was a uh, a male to a female and then you can see i've tilted it at an angle and there will be a little bit of flexibility in there to where i can uh i can move it a little bit but i don't want to break that glue um so i'm really happy with that and then this is tilted to the angle to where we'll go underneath the fence over here and we'll take that seal tight connection uh, we'll probably uh screw a couple of straps there and then a couple straps to the back or zip tie it depending upon now the seal tight is connected and on the wire is ran through there so you can see that obviously i have more than what i need but uh you know i've got to make a couple of bends and you never know exactly how things are going to go you could start screwing into something and it not be stable so you may have to rethink your plan so i uh i've just left that excess until i'm 100 percent sure what i'm going to do and then that's going to all be determined on how i mount the uh the photo eye head up here